Hi everyone, welcome to Knitting Today. Um, sorry, I think we had missed two weeks ago, not last week, excuse me. So I want to introduce, we have new colors of Sueno, and I want to talk about this yarn first because this is one of my go-to yarns. Uh, it is a DK weight. It is a superwash merino, 80%. And 20% viscose uh, bamboo from bamboo. Um, it is spectacular. And we have two types here. And by that I mean we have solids and we have some tonals. Uh, the price difference is different. Uh, the solids are $16.15. You have 255 yards. And it can go on a US 3 to 7, actually, uh, although I like it better um, on that 6, 5, 6 range for myself. The tonals, which are just spectacular, are also 255 yards at $21. And they blend really pretty. So if you notice, I've mixed them in with the other colors. Um, we have used this this past year on a number of shawls because of the drape, but I really like it in some of the church mouse sweaters that are available, which we might do as a knit along um, for the Wednesday group. It would be a basic sweater knit along in a DK weight. And we're gonna start that probably in two to three weeks. I need to get the patterns in so you have choices. And then we'll go over all the different yarn choices that you have. The pattern we have here that I'm um, showcasing is a free pattern from Scassell. Now, for those of you who do not belong to Ravelry, you can go to Scassell's website. And Scassell is spelled S K. A C E L. So I want to go over that because I always spell it wrong when I go to look it up. Um, the hat was done in a tonal um, color, and Paula made that sample. It is beautiful, it wears wonderful, and again, it's a super wash, so you can wash it and dry it. Um, really, really nice yarn to work with. Uh, wait till you get it. And I want to showcase two new products we have from um, Coco Knits. They will be up on the website. We have yarn snips. And these are really special because they're hand forged each pair. And I'm going to open this up and it comes with a little leather sheath. There are great little snips. Now these are not what I would call precise scissors, so you're not going to cut circles out or squares, but they are exactly what they say, yarn snips. So you put them in your knitting bag and they are to snip your yarns. And they are $10.50. So they're really fun and I like they're all out of one piece of uh, metal and each one is handmade. So it's a really cool product. And as you know, we love Coco Knits. The next new product for them is a needle gauge. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about this. This is $15.50. And this is the perfect even carry in your pocket needle gauge. They're magnetic, so they all open up and you can see the little magnets here. And you have every size. On the opposite side, it says what size needle. So like this is a size US 13, nine millimeter. And so what you can do is just swing out what you want and then put your needle in. And if it doesn't fit, like if, or if it's too big, you can go down a size. So again, I can try the size. This was a US 8. I believe I'm using a US 7 today. And there you go. A perfect fit. So really fun, kind of fun to play with. I'm sorry, um, I 
like fun things. Um, it is, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, sustainable, made out of sustainable um, plastic, so it is not um, hurting the environment. So we really like that. Thank you, Coco Knits. So today I wanted to talk about some increases, um, how to make one. I know for some of you doing the pitch sweater um, or other patterns here, it has different decrease and uh, also a make one. When a pattern says make one L or make one R, it's because it wants to swing the um, stitch the way it looks to the left or to the right. And it's a really easy way uh, to do that. So I'm just going to knit and get over a few stitches. Now, really easy to make one right, you are going to pull the yarn from the back, oops, up to the front. So notice this bar in between the stitches. My left needle is coming from the back to the front. And now I like to talk about the short shank and the long shank of what you see on your needle because it's here, you always want to knit through the short shank. So I pulled it out a little so I can get in, and then you knit. And if you notice, if I put this down, can you see this bar is leaning to the right? Make one right. So let's do that again. To make one right, I come from the back in between the bar, and I'm going to knit through that short shank in the front. And there's my stitch going to the right. Now, what happens if I knit through the back of, if I pull that bar up and I forget to knit through the short shank and I knit through this back large, look at that hole I'm making. And that's exactly what you're going to do, is I've just made a hole in my knitting. So a really good way, even if you don't remember right or left, you always want to go through the short because otherwise that hole you see will always be there on it. So let's knit one. Now, to make, make one leaning left, so make one L, come from the front and lift the bar up. Notice how I have the long shank in the front and the short in the back, and now you're going to knit off that back loop. And if again, if I lie this down, this is it right here, and I'm leaning left. Does everybody see that? Are you all awake? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's do that once again. I come from the front, lift up that bar, and again, I'm knitting through the back loop here, and I made a left-leaning increase. So if I look at before, here it is right there. Still no nail. And now, what happens if we have a purl stitch? and we need to make one purl. So essentially it's the exact same thing. Yarn in front for a purl. Again, if I 
pull up to the front, short shanks in front, purl through the front. Whoops, I just, sorry about that. I split my stitch. Again, right leaning purl stitch. Now, if I go to the back, again, my yarn's in front, so I can't just put it through the back, because how am I going to purl? So essentially, you're going to flip, come still from the back, but I'm pulling that back loop to the front so I can purl off of it and continue. Let's do that once more because this one is a tricky one. So again, to make a left leaning, I pull the bar up with the short in the back and I have to then purl through that back loop. So I'm bringing that back loop forward and I'm going to purl off the back. So does that make sense to a lot of people? I hope. Now some patterns when they say just make one it doesn't matter how you make one. But just know that you never want to go through the long shank. So if you can remember that, that's perfect. Now, sometimes if I'm in a rib and I'm increasing in pattern, you have the option of increasing as a purl or as a knit, and you can make that choice. Now, the last thing I wanted to show today, or one other thing, and then any questions, is some decreases. Because now we've increased to... When we decrease, most times we think of just knit two together. And pulling it off. And if you notice my knit two togethers are leaning to the right. So a normal decrease, knit two together. Again, I've pulled them to the right. But now sometimes they'll ask you to knit two together through the back loop. Just put, go right through the back loop and knit two together. And what you've done is you have put a twist in and now it's going off to the left. Again, it's really easy though to just knit two together through the back loop. And the other decrease that confuses a lot of people and that comes up quite a bit, is when you see at the beginning of a row, it'll say knit one, SSK, knit the last three stitches, knit two together, knit one. And why do they do that? When you SSK, kind of like we've changed the orientation of this knit two together through the back loop. You are changing the orientation of your yarn, but you might not want to see this big twist. So you're going to slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit. Again, I've now changed the orientation of those stitches on my needle. Take them back to the left needle 
just like I'm showing, and then knit through the back. So you do not have to remove your right needle. You can just knit through. And look at the difference between knit two together through the back loop here and the twist you see and an SSK. It is different. You don't have, if I pull this down, you're not, you don't have that big loop in here. You notice it looks like a regular stitch. But it's still swinging it to the side. So you still have that. Once again, SSK, slip as if to knit, Slip as if to knit. Left needle comes in front, knit two together off the back. And now in the pitch sweater that we are doing, it does what's called a modified SSK, which I found very interesting in this pattern. It's probably one of the first times with all my knitting that I've seen this. And it asks you to slip the first stitch as if to knit and put it back on the left needle and knit two together through the back loop. Thus, you've only switched the orientation of one. And if you notice, that knit stitch goes straight up and it buries that one behind. So on an SSK, I've taken it to my left here. On a modified SSK, can you see this knit stitch is going mm -hmm. straight up? Mm -hmm. So think about how that, if you're in a specific pattern, how that's going to change the way your knitting looks. Again, if I do that again, slip the first stitch as if to purl, or to knit, excuse me, put it back on my needle, knit two through the back loop, and take it off. And again, if I lie this down for Val, you can see the difference. This is coming straight up now and you're burying the stitch you've decreased below, as opposed to here where you're, you can see you've put them together. So I thought that was really neat. Now the last thing, wait, I wanna go over, sorry, <laughs> one more, is how to purl two together through the back loop. And this, we know how to purl two together through the front. It's a normal purl. But when they say purl two together through the back loop, just like we had to make one through the back loop, you are going to turn your knitting around and put your needle through those two stitches. Bring that needle to the front and now purl off the back. And again, I, one more time, purl two together through the back loop, put your needle through those two stitches from the back loop coming to the front and then purl off. So I hope that helps in talking a little bit about some increases and decreases um, as we get into some different patterns coming up. Um, I kind of wanted to go over that because it will come up. So starting uh, mid-September, and we're going to change things up a little because I would like to do a knit along of a sweater for all of you at home watching. 
But also, starting in October, we're getting ready for our holiday knitting. So we're kind of splitting up what we're going to talk about. So two Wednesdays will be on the knit along, but two Wednesdays will be on holiday knitting and different projects that are coming up and special things that you can purchase for, from us for the holidays. So I hope you enjoyed today. Stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you all next Wednesday. Have a great afternoon. Bye.